Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you the Imani Technique Kim Method 1, which I call Injector Assisted Haptic Fixation. And this is a modification that I developed back in 2017 and published it. I'm going to show this on a simulized eye and see how easy it is on this model eye. You can actually mount this model eye on your operating room microscope so you can practice this at home. I first described this technique that I developed on my YouTube channel and published it on September 18th, 2017, and it's titled My Pearls and Modifications of the Imani Scleral Haptic Fixation Technique, A Stepwise Approach. I also wrote an article in the 2017 November December edition for the Cataract and Refractive Surgery Today publication, and it was titled the next big thing since Clural Haptic Fixation, which described my Yamane modification techniques, including the injector-assisted haptic fixation technique. And I was invited to write an article in Dr. David Chang, Argawal, and Lee's book called Advanced IOL Fixation Techniques, and it's in chapter 48, called Yamane Double Needle Technique, the Kim Modification. You can purchase these fake eyes. You can look it up under simuli.com. And I just purchased one of these at home. They come in a pack of two. I have taught several wet labs at AAO and ASCRS, and we use these stimuli models to teach how to do the Yamane technique, and it is extremely helpful. And there is a model I specifically designated for intrascleral haptic fixation technique. And so I'm going to do the injector assisted haptic fixation technique using the CT Lucia 602 lens. This is a 30 gauge thin walled needle which is essential for this technique. And so you'll see I'm going to bend the 30 gauge half inch thin walled needle about 70 degrees and it's going to be nine millimeters in length from the tip. So I'm using a needle driver actually to do this technique. So again, nine millimeters, 70 degrees. You can see the bevel is actually going to face the approach of the haptic. It's very important. If you're going to do this technique, you have to make sure that the bevel is facing the approach of the haptic. And so when you have the actual syringe facing up and down, which is going to be the technique, the bevel will be facing the main incision, which is going to be facing towards you. And that's because the IOL and the haptic will be coming through the main incision. You want to make sure that bevel is facing the incision towards you. And for the first needle, I always like to mount it on a syringe for better control. For the second needle, it's going to be bent at the hub. You want this bevel also to approach the trailing haptic, which will actually be facing towards you. And it's again facing the main incision. So remember, whenever you bend the needle, you need to make sure that the needle is bent in such a way that the bevel faces the approach of the haptic. A three millimeter keratome incision is made for the IOL. You have to make sure your incisions for the needle technique are gonna be 90 degrees from your main incision. Very important. Make sure your scleral needle placements are 90 degrees from your main incision. So the left needle is placed two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus, it's tunneled two millimeters, and then dives into the eye. Remember, this is the left side needle, which is bent nine millimeters from the tip, and again, you do this because when you release this needle into the eye, the needle haptic IOL complex, you don't want it to be moving around too much in the vitreous space. So you want to make sure that needle is a little bit bent towards the tip. As the lens is advanced by the technician, you can see I'm practicing and maneuvering the haptic as well as the needle you see I have exquisite control with both hands. My left hand's holding the needle, my right hand is holding the IOL injector. I'm able to very carefully and methodically direct that haptic into the needle. Once I have the right angle, I ask the technician to advance the lens, and as she advances the lens, the haptic very nicely and smoothly slides into the lumen of the needle. And if it doesn't, I ask her to stop, and then I make sure I reposition my hands so that it facilitates the threading of the haptic into the needle. So it's a careful coordination between my two hands to direct the haptic into the needle and also directing the technician when she should advance the injector or stop the injector.
And once the entire lens is delivered, you want to make sure it's going to be delivered with the optic in the correct orientation. And once it's delivered in the correct orientation, you want to sweep that trailing haptic to the right. So I want you to appreciate what's going on. I'm still holding the syringe and the needle with my left hand. The right hand has fully and successfully delivered the lens completely. The trailing haptic is swept to the right. You won't see it in the video, but I'm going to disengage the syringe from the needle with a hemostat. It's very important to do this very carefully, holding the needle as you disengage the needle from the syringe with the hemostat. I'm going to take the trailing haptic and loop it in the incision. Again, it's very important. This is that U-shaped configuration. So the easy grab and go, you're able to grab the apex of the haptic very nicely. And this is a perfect position because once you capture the haptic within the incision, you don't have to search for it. You don't have to grab it and look for it and then re-grab it and reposition it. You grab the apex of the U and you can see it's not parallel, but that's okay because you're gonna dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle. Remember the bevel is facing towards you. The bevel is facing, therefore, the approach of the haptic. Once you're able to engage the haptic with the bevel of the needle, you're able to turn the haptic, flatten it out, straighten it out, make it parallel. And once it's flattened out and straightened out, you're able to slide it very gently into the lumen of the needle. Again, you're going to take that trailing haptic, which is going to approach the bevel of the needle. You're going to engage the bevel, flatten it out, because once you engage it, you're able to use that frictional force to turn the haptic, because remember, the haptic is curved and the needle is straight. So you have to adjust the haptic towards the contour of the needle, which is straight. You want to straighten it out, flatten it out on the bevel, and then you'll be able to slide it in very nice. You can see both haptics are then pulled out in the direction of the needle tracks, and then you can cauterize the tips of the haptics, and that's really the end of the case. So I'm showing you that technique that I developed back in 2017. Again, that's injector-assisted haptic fixation. I'm using a simulized eye using the CT Lucia 602 lens on a 30 gauge half inch thin walled needle. By using the injector, you're very easily and very controllable to be able to slide that leading haptic into the left side needle. The problem with this technique, however, is it's still like the Yamane technique in that the trailing haptic is still very difficult to fixate. You can see with the model eye, I was able to capture the trailing haptic within the incision in a U-shaped configuration. However, it's still ergonomically a little bit of a challenge, especially those who are learning it. I'm able to dock the haptic on the bevel of the needle, turn it, flatten it out, straighten it out, and then very easily advance it into the needle. Remember, you can't advance the haptic if it's curved. If it's curved, if it's not straight, parallel to the needle, facing the needle, it will not go in and you will damage the haptic. So remember, bevel is very important. Bending the needle is very important in the direction that you need to be in. Engaging the bevel with the haptic, turning the haptic, flattening it out, and then advancing it, externalizing both haptics. I like to do them one at a time. I don't like to do them simultaneously like it's shown in the video. I like to pull one out, cauterize it, pull the other one out, cauterize it. I do prefer method two, which is my second modification, which is trailing haptic first technique. But this is a good starting point. If you don't want to switch to that technique and you want to do it the Yamane way, I do think this is a better way by using the injector to facilitate fixating the leading haptic into the left side needle. So I hope this was helpful to you and I thank you for your attention.